Right, you are completely blind. Right yes, now. yeah. <laughs> okay. I wanted to start with this game you played, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago because you sent me some of your games from your last on the board tournament. Uh, this one is from an under 1600 tournament you played recently, I guess. Is that right? Yes, this is, um, yeah, this is from just two, uh, like a week and a half ago. Yes. Ah, okay. So it's very recent. Okay. It's Jason Sonardi was your opponent. I don't know if you remember this game. Oh, oh, oh. I think it was the oh. first round. Oh, wait, no, this, this was a different tournament. This was from new West summer. This is from the summers. Ah, okay. So maybe two months I ago. <laughs> Just, uh, ah, okay. yeah, no, but it's still pretty recent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it was a London system. How do you get along with the London system? <laughs> I don't know it very well. Um, I, at this tournament, I prepared for it, um, a decent bit. Um, but it's definitely an opening that I should, okay, here's the thing. Online, I almost never play against the London. People just don't play the London. Really? At, yeah, at my level, at my level, nobody plays the London. But over the board, um, all the kids pl only play the London. Like, <laughs> like almost everyone. It's like ninety percent of my games is black. If it's against a kid, it's going to be the London. Go figure. I, I, I'm always playing against the London. Oh <laughs> yeah. And everyone plays uh -huh. it against me. I know it's a bit annoying because why? to make a lot of moves almost automatically. Um, it resembles the Bengal Gambit or those kind of openings in which uh, one of the sides uh, always goes for the same structure and gets to play a lot of free moves in the sense that they don't have to think a lot about it. They are going to play E3, C3, Knight E2, Knight GF3. Um, it's really solid and it's actually very reasonable. Um, Everyone is annoyed by the London system <laughs> because of that. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult to go very wrong with white. Um, the thing is, it's a perfect, perfectly reasonable opening. It's very sound and everyone thinks it uh, just for beginners and it's actually not. <laughs> uh, Kansky plays it all the time. Carson has played it a lot. And um, the thing is, there's no way of refuting it because it's, uh, it's inherently sound. It's a good opening. And um, you went for the classical way. Knight f3, well, you played bishop e7 before. And after e3, you castle, bishop d3. And now you went for d5. OK. When he was threatening to actually play e4, you went for d5. That's fine. Um, he castled c5. That's OK. That's right. c3. And now you played c4. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that it, it's it's overextending. Um, and so I wasn't 100% sure that I should have played it. But I thought that... I could still hold on to it. I thought, you know, B5, I thought, you know, I was definitely aware that it's dangerous to overextend, um, but I just thought I could get away with it. <laughs> this is, well, releasing the tension in the center, maybe a bit too early. Mm. Uh, this is a possible plan in the future. I mean, you're going to throw everything at him <laughs> on the queen side. Uh, but you still have a lot of play or pieces uh, that you need to develop. And well, this is rather premature because in the London, this plays right into White's hand. I mean, um, once you release the tension in the center, White gets to play e4 very easily. Um, this e4 break is one of the main ideas for White in the London. and. Also, the attack by means of knight e5, bishop g3, f4, queen f3. Uh, you might be familiar with those kind of stuff because uh, the London players always go that way. 
uh, those are the two main plans and releasing tension in the center makes both of those plans a lot easier for white i mean for example if you went for something like like c6 e4 is going to be a lot harder for him to play because once he plays that break you can take on d4 and you're going to give him a very weak isolated pawn for example like bd2 um, b6 and now if he wants to go for e4 then he has this problem the tension in the center makes it possible for you to play mm. he takes e4 knight takes e4 and now you can take on d4 and he always has something to worry about on the center once you play c4 this is a, this isn't going to be a problem for white anymore he's going to go bishop c2 like he played in game and now e4 is much easier to carry out uh, and you don't really have the means to prevent it anymore <laughs> oh okay so that's interesting because i um when i was considering c4 I did not at all worry or consider e4. I was thinking only the only issue could be that black uh, that white could undermine my pawn with a with a with a pawn break. So I was not looking at the center at all. I was just wondering. I was just think. I was just looking at this as being an issue, and I thought you know b5 could hold on to it. So that's interesting that you say that. Uh, e4. And maybe d3 even helps you because you're trying to to get an attack on the queen side. So any action on the queen side should favor you at this point. Um, but the thing is, uh, after you played c4, now you have a pawn chain. It goes from f7 to c4. Pawn chains are like arrows. <laughs> they usually tell you where you should be playing. Uh, so with this structure from f7 to c4, you're going to go for b5, b4. This is your natural break, just to take on c3 and open the b file and undermine the pawn at c3. This is your main idea after you played c4. And you, well, you continued uh, with that idea. You, you went for a6, b5 later on. And the problem is here why... Uh, gets earlier <laughs> uh, after c6 bishop c2 knight c6 knight bd2 white also has this structure that is telling him you should break on e4 you should go for uh, the space grab on the queen, on the king side and you should be attacking uh, notice that after he goes for e4 and um, if you take on e4, the c4 pawn is going to suffer too, and something like that happened in the game. And if you don't take, well, if you take on e4, he's also establishing some some space advantage on the center. He has his pawn on d4, and you parted with your pawn on d5, so the center is going to be b4 against e6. He has some space advantage, and you pawn on c4, like you said, it tends to be over overextended and it requires attention. Um, well, here you could have gone for b5 maybe. You played a6, which is rather slow. Um, I mean, you didn't need to play this in preparation for <laughs> uh, b5. I see that, uh, well, you run a computer um, analysis of this. Uh, the computer indicated knight h5, uh, uh, which is a. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was just going to say I, in, whenever I analyze uh, the London, I've noticed that knight h5 is a recurring theme in the London. The computer always wants to play it almost almost okay. every move. Like. <laughs> yeah, you'd uh, change that bishop and that. Not a bad idea at all. I don't think at this point it solves your problems, but um, you have to consider it. Maybe white wasn't all that precise either, because usually he wants to respond knight h5 with bishop g3 when he still hasn't castled, because with the rook on h1, when you it changed on g3, after h takes g3, he has an attack. 
from yeah. the age five. He might have um, castled too soon. That's a bit of a subtlety, <laughs> uh, but it's quite common on the London. Uh, why usually delays short castling uh, just so that he can keep his bishop on g3 and it's very difficult to change it without allowing a crushing attack with the rook on h1 and this bishop. Yeah, I've, no I've noticed that. And I've noticed that white will often play h3 in the London to give that bishop uh, somewhere to hide. Yeah, <laughs> maybe knight bd2 wasn't all that precise here either. He should have gone for h3 now that castle's short. Um, but well, anyway, a seat seems reasonable, but I guess if you wanted to play b5, you could have played it immediately. Especially because now if you go b5 on the next move, then he can go for a3 and you are going to have to waste another time on playing a5 just so that you can push before. Um, so maybe this a seat is a loss of time. Well, he prevented before, even before you <laughs> you threatened it. And um, well, as you said, the computer again wants to play knight h5 right away. <laughs> uh, b5 is also reasonable. You played bishop b6 here. What do you think of that? The reason I played bishop d6 is because I remember, like, when I was preparing the London, I remember watching some youtube videos and i know that in more than one of the videos uh the they the people giving the lesson said that a common idea for black in the london is to trade off the dark squared bishops um so that's what i was trying to do that's the <laughs> uh, okay uh i think it's right i mean um besides trying to trade these bishops uh you're trying to establish control over this I mean, if he, if White has the time to play knight e5, bishop g3, and f4, he's going to go for a very strong attack, uh, especially since you you haven't really started to make progress on the queen side. Uh, this kind of prevents this idea because if now White goes knight e5, you can play queen c7 right away. He doesn't get the time to play bishop g3 because he's hanging a pawn here. So he has to go, I guess, for knight bf3, but uh, now he's not really attacking. Now, now you can go b5 and you can continue with your plan. And you always get the possibility of blocking on e4, which is a very main idea <laughs> on the London. Um, so I guess it was reasonable. Your, I guess your opponent played really well here. I don't know uh, if you remember what he played after Bishop D6. Uh, I can't remember exactly. This was a, a little while ago. Yeah. Yeah, he, he really took advantage of, of this C4. <laughs> he actually changed Bishop and after Queen D6, well, I guess you can imagine what he played here. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Um... Well, now he the plan of knight e5 and the four is not available anymore. He has to go for the other plan. the plan that is suggested by the pawn structure. Mm -mm. Um, I'm looking, well, I'm almost wondering if e4, because my, my c5 pawn is weak. Exactly, yeah. e4. Uh, as we said, your natural break here is b5, a5, and b4. You want to go for b4, and you want to undermine this pawn after b takes c. He should go for b takes c, and the pawn on c3 will be a weakness. And uh, well, you should be attacking on the queen side just because of your pawn chain. Uh, white 
is on the other side of that pawn chain. He has d2, c3, and d4. So this arrow points to him that he should be playing on the center and the queen on the king side. So e4 is the natural break. And you don't really have much of a choice here. He's threatening e5 and it looks worrying. <laughs> so d takes e4 is I don't know if it's the only move, but it it should be close to it. <laughs> Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, and now you play f5. How do you rate that move? And what should white do? <laughs> um, just going from memory, I'm thinking that f5 ended up being a blunder, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to remember why. Um, I mean... F5 is, is totally a move I would play. Uh, I mean, I know that it, in a way, it's it's in in an indirect way or direct way. It's it's E5 is becoming weaker, um, even though we're controlling it twice. But um, but the weakness of F5 wasn't so apparent to me because um, we do have two pieces on e5 guard it or guarding e5 and i thought that would be enough um maybe it's also worsening our our light squared bishop yes um uh, it's very weakening i mean uh, you it's true that you have two pieces guarding if uh, but the thing is uh, weaknesses are determined by the fact that pounds don't cover those squares. I mean, uh, if I can't be covered by one of your pawns anymore, with the pawn on f7, you can always go for f6 to the knight, for example, land here. Uh, you can always push him back f6. Now that you play the f5, this is permanent outpost for this knight, or well, for pretty much any white piece. And it also oh. makes your I, I, open I just see now that he could just simply trade he just take my knight with his bishop and then as you say put the knight on the outpost and I can't do anything about it yes oh uh, yeah <laughs> I, that, that I, I didn't consider that yeah. yeah yeah well um this is a problem even if he goes for bishop c2 but bishop, bishop c2 is weaker because you get to play b5, bishop b7. Now your bishop b7 is quite a good piece. I mean, you can go then bishop d5 and push your queen side pounds and bishop on d5. Um, once you get him there, it's going to be a very good piece. Um, and it defends e6 and c4. And well, it might not be the best piece in the world because all your pounds are, are on light squares, but uh, it's quite effective and this huge weakness on e5 is not felt in the same way as after bishop takes his seats which was extremely strong um it's a simplification maneuver i mean um i don't know if you've heard of the term simplification yeah yeah uh well, it's basically based on the idea of leaving your opponent with his bad pieces and keeping your best pieces. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> like this is so obvious to me. I think I just I simply overlooked. I overlooked that um, that after F five that I I think I just exactly. kind of yeah I think I just kind of assumed that he would have to retreat because I generally you know I generally assume that. Um, Opponent won't want to trade. Oh yeah, yeah. Opponent won't want to trade bishop for a knight. But I, I think that was just a very bad oversight, uh, because you know, looking at it now, it's it's so obvious. F five. He just takes the knight, and then he's got like that knight will never, never have to move ever. <laughs> yeah, it's not possible to dislodge him anymore. Um, well, bishop takes his seat. Um, after queen takes his seat, maybe if you can. If you have the time to play b5, bishop b7, and bishop d5, then this bishop on d5 at least defends everything. And it would be in the long diagonal, and you have your plan of pushing your queenside pawns forward. 
Uh, the thing is, you still are a couple of moves from getting this, and I don't think you quite get to play Bishop B7, and that's a huge problem because you're really getting this horrible bishop. Uh, it doesn't get to the long diagonal, for example, knight e5 immediately. And um, well, now there's, there's a problem if you go queen d5, which looks logical, then queen f3, and you're simplifying the position even further. Um, well, if you if you don't need to change the queens, you have to lose more time, and then white's plan is quite clear. I mean, he's going to play rook f e1, he's going to double up on the e file, and you're in big trouble with this backward pawn. And if you go for b5, for example, then he can trade queens and... Okay, uh, you don't have that backward pawn anymore, but this is this bishop is definitely shot. Yeah, F yeah f4. F4 yeah. Is, is strong <laughs> here. Yeah. Well, I think it's strong at least. Um, you're going to suffer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... It's not pretty. Well, thank God he played bishop c2. <laughs> and you're very much alive now. And this shows how relative um, a weakness can be. Now e5 is not such a big problem because you actually get to play b5 and bishop b7. And your bishop on b7 is a good piece. Uh, so after rook e1, Bishop b7. Uh, he went for queen e2, rook a e8, rook a d1. And I still prefer white, of course, because of, of this. this. This square, he can still try to exploit this. Um, maybe he can go knight e5. Uh, of course, he always has to retake with a piece so that he keeps this file open and so that he can put pressure on your pawn on his seats and he can then go f3 just to fight against your bishop it's not going to be easy for him to break through uh, even if he gets this square because when you go bishop d5 everything is very well defended uh, but still you have some work to do here and uh, you play queen d7 which i didn't get <laughs> yeah um uh, that... <laughs> i played that uh yeah and from now on I you you kind of started to move your pieces around <laughs> um there was no clear plan yeah i don't know yeah i probably just had no plan i don't know maybe you were you were worried about this rook hanging here but well there's nothing at least there's nothing going on there yet. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's the explanation. Uh, I, <laughs> um, I don't. I have no idea. It's difficult to suggest anything either way. I mean, maybe you can. Well, it's not so easy to continue your plan now with a five because now he. Can insert some pressure here. How do you think he can do that? A5 might be a mistake. <laughs> so I, I played I played Queen D7, but you're saying if I played A5, why is that not good? Yeah, there's there's a problem with A5, I think. First, I'm just wondering about uh, a4. A4. Big, a4 is a big problem. Yeah, because c c5 is is again weak. Yeah, this pawn is not well defended, and after he takes, everything is going to fall. Now he's now you're in serious trouble. Uh, so you can go a5, which was your. It was supposed to be your. Your main idea here. Um, well, this is not easy. You still don't face an easy task here. Um, 
maybe you have to wait until he busts his knight here and play bishop d5. I don't know. Maybe you can go for rook e7 and try to play rook f8 just so you force him to play this. And then after the exchange, yes, you can go bishop d5. And it's still a matter yeah. of staying still, so it's not comfortable at all for you. Uh, you're going to face some problems here. Just because you have no control over the dark squares, and especially this one, uh, you don't have active counterplay here. And that's one of the problems of, of uh, getting a permanent weakness like e5, even if he didn't play the best moves here and he didn't go for bishop takes c6 when it was the time, uh, you're still facing some problems. Uh, your position is more solid than in that than in that variation, but uh, but this weak permanent weakness ties you down. Um, it's not easy to suggest anything. So Queen is there, maybe maybe it's not. <laughs> uh, the thing is, well, the lack uh, the lack of a plan here is well, it shows that the position is really not easy to handle and and that this is holding you back. This square is a big problem. Um, maybe, just maybe, I'm just thinking of it. Queen d5 could be an idea so that he doesn't get to play knight e5 so easily, but maybe he can prepare for it. I don't really know how. Maybe this is a bit more disrupting <laughs> so he can't play knight e5 so easily. Well, it could be an idea, but either way, you have to wait. <laughs> Queen d7, well, he went for a4, it looks reasonable, I mean, maybe he could go for knight e5 directly, but he's trying to loosen up your pounds a bit so that he can uh, put pressure on b5 later or maybe push b3 and well once you try start trading all these pounds uh, some weakness has to appear and here you play hc how do you feel about that one i don't hate it um i mean we are preventing the knight you know from coming into the g5 square and taking away two key squares from my king but i think i i think i was you know i was trying to get some play in here i was trying to get something going and i thought you know maybe g5 move my king up push things slowly i was trying to get something going um okay that's what i wanted to know i wanted to know what you were up to here. Mm. <laughs> um well when you're in the waiting business, <laughs> I don't know if you want to start moving your pounds. Uh, with Queen D7, you kind of recognize that, you acknowledge that you're kind of tied down here. And pushing your pounds forward might not be the solution. And now this is probably a problem. <laughs> uh, you're losing, you're losening up some square. Uh, G6 is now weak. For example, knight on e5 could easily jump to G6 and, and create some threats. It's not going to happen uh, when he plays knight e5. You're going to immediately chop the knight. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe in some variation you can't actually take. And then you have a problem with G6. Uh, so when you're waiting, uh, moving your pounds up, you have to take into account that you can, you might be weakening your position for free. <laughs> and well, if the idea is to get something going, this looks pretty much suicidal. Really? <laughs> I mean, G5, <laughs> it might be too much. Uh, this weakness here is just too big. I mean, if you start pushing your pawns forward, your king is going to suffer. And White always has the possibility of playing knight e5. Uh, it's changed the knights and then post a strong piece on e5, for example. Um, let's say he takes on b5, a takes b, and he goes for a. Well, this move looks 
a little bit dumb, but just for the sake of this variation, let's play h3 and now g5. And I guess he's going to go knight e5. And you're going to be in some trouble with your pounds, so they are your king is now very weak. I, I really don't feel very good about this. Um, I don't know what you think about this variation, but I guess your your king is going to suffer in the long run. Um, I'll rather wait here. Uh, I guess. Uh, okay, H C. Um, yeah, maybe you could go for queen d5, don't touch anything, and and try to be as solid as you can. Um, in fact, what white is expecting you to do is to go nuts and just throw everything at him and loosen up your position a bit more. You have to cope with one weakness already, and white probably has to create another one if he go, wants, to cut, wants to crash through. And if you do it for him, it will be much easier. Um, so you play h6, a takes b5, a takes b5. Well, I think he played well here. He's trying to create another weakness. I mean, if you take on b3, then b5 is going to be weak. Um, well, this pawn is also going to be a problem with the bishop on b3. So I think this is fine. You play knight a5. B takes c4. And now you chopped on b3. <laughs> How about that? You took on f3. What do you think? What do you think of, it, of it, bishop b it... F takes F3. Would you play it again? Would you change? I'm... I don't hate. I don't hate it. Um, I'm. I'm really like as as we've been talking about the the E5 square is so weak, um, and the knight is just always looming over it. I thought if we take there and then we take on C5, um, then it's actually my knight that is covering. E5. Um, the only question I had was: Is my lone isolated pawn on the B file? Is that a, is that it's a kind of shaky ground? Um, but I really like the idea of taking out his knight. I, mean, I didn't like it looming over E5. Yeah, it's it's a long term problem. <laughs> uh, I don't know about Bishop takes F3 and. Now the position is a bit more open and uh, I'm going to miss this bishop. <laughs> but you're right, it's very difficult to cope with the fact that the knight is jumping on 2e5 at any minute. Uh, I took a look at knight takes c4. Uh, well, it seems reasonable. You might be able to get away with it, then you're going to play bishop d5. And again, you're solid, but you're, you're worse. You're always worse here, at least, at least a little bit. Um, I don't think bishop takes f3 solves all your problems, because yes, you're solving the problem of this, this square on e5, or kind of, <laughs> because he can always go bishop b3 like he did in the game. and and trade your knight on c4, and then again post a uh, rook maybe on e5. Uh, but well, at least you are fighting for this square, and it makes sense. But the bishop is a powerful tool here, and he doesn't have to worry about this diagonal anymore, so uh, there seems that it seems that there are no great options for black here. Uh, queen takes f3, knight takes c4, Bishop b3. I have to say that he played really well up to this point. I mean, um, I was surprised. Again, a, an opponent who says he's 
I don't know, in his 1000s, low 1000s. That's normal. UFC, yeah. That's no uh, yeah. CFC. Yeah. Yeah. And he went for E4, then he, uh, he took advantage of this E4. I mean, uh, he played really well. And uh, now you play rook A8, a bold move. <laughs> you give up some control of his seats, but well, you want to activate your rook. So I can't criticize that much. Yeah. Uh, bishop takes C4. I don't know if this was a bit um, premature, but well, you have some weaknesses to cope with. Um, from here on, he might have uh, let you go a little bit east. He went for the pawn immediately. He played queen e2, hitting on both. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Sasha. Um, yeah, I think partly because I think part of the psychology here was my opponent. I um, I forget what he was rated, but you said he was about a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, much better than that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think at this tournament I was about yeah I was about four hundred points higher than him. So I think he was happy to get a draw. So he might not have pushed as much as he would have. Ah, uh, that. Yeah. That's a good explanation <laughs> because he liquidated everything. Even yeah. When he was about. Um, yeah. Well, Queen E two. Here, the, the computer analysis run rook e5, which looks like a very position, a very strong positional move. He's going to go rook c5, maybe bring the other rook to e1. And you are completely tied down. I mean, this is a very nasty ending to to defend. Uh, you have well, pretty much a couple of big problems and um, well he has to take care of the pawn on c3 but you have two weakness to only one of white and he also has control of great square so this kind of thing uh, has to do with the fact that this pawn is very difficult to attack when he gets to play um, through your weaknesses, uh, the most probable, probable outcome is that he gets to um, to attack your weaknesses much more easily than you. Um, Queen e2 seems very reasonable. I mean, he's getting a pound here. Uh, rook a3, rook takes c4, and rook c8. Very well played. You have to go for a your rooks ending you need those queens it's changed um, because your king is also more exposed than his uh, so this swap of queens favors you it gives you good chances of actually holding this and uh, took with the c rook rook c c3 that was the, yeah. That was a bit. That was a bit of a hard choice to deciding which rook. Um, yeah, you wanted to go for rook d three after war. I think that's it what I was sense. thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. You have to chase this pawn, and and it seems reasonable. Well, he could have tried to to push a little bit. I mean. He's bound up. It's not easy to convert, if at all possible. <laughs> uh, but either way, he went for rookie three, and it's almost an instant draw. I don't know what he wanted to do here, but uh, he was out of danger. I mean, uh, uh, the only way of actually losing this is hanging one of the rooks. <laughs> and he was. Uh, very content with the draw, I guess, as you said. And well, there's just not much to see here. It was declared a draw. <laughs> yeah. Um, I found the the game very interesting. I mean, uh, I want to call your attention to this moment uh, when you played C4, and we're going to go to the other study. Um, 
We are now on game study. I want to go to this one. Let me see. Okay. Hmm. Because this game uh, made me remember a lot of uh, very similar examples where one of the side give up tension in the center, maybe a little bit premature. Um, and then the opponent gets a huge attack on the other side of the board. And that's usually the, the normal outcome of giving up the tension too early. Then we go to the study. Uh... Yeah, always this lesson. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe I should expel you from the study and send you the the invitation again. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the study. Ah, I'm sorry. I just kicked you out. <laughs> oh, I, I'm still. I'm st I want to. Oh. Okay. I wanted to show on your notification. Well, I'm I'm still in in the study, the Pillsbury Wolf game. Yeah. 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 Okay. We are on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this game is going to sound familiar. <laughs> and D four, D five. C4, E6, Knight C3, Knight F6, Bishop G5, Knight D7, Knight F3, Bishop D7, E3, Castle King side, Rook C1. Uh, well, this game was played on uh, 1903, I guess. Yeah. Um, everyone was playing the the orthodox variation of the queen's guard. Uh, this was seen almost in every game. Uh, in every uh, well, in the twenties, uh, it was d4 was the primary first move for white, and this position was seen in almost every game. Uh, I guess you saw the some of the games from the match again. Uh, Alkine against Capablanca, and this position was seen well in 31 of the 34 games of the match. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, it was very trendy. Uh, Pillsbury, I guess, was the one of the guys who started the trend. And um, this seats now, okay, here. People usually play C seat just so that the pawn is well defended on this file that is soon going to be opened. Uh, be that white take on, takes on D5 or uh, black takes on C4. Uh, usually, in this kind of position where where black has this bishop um, is still undeveloped and is slightly behind in in space he has some problem uh, white has a little bit more space on the center white wants to get rid of some of the minor pieces uh, some exchanges will do him really good so this kind of maneuver is actually quite common here now he gets to trade a couple of bishops and then he's going to trade this knight on c3 so that he gets rid of a couple of um, minor pieces. And then he tries to finally solve all his problems by means of breaking on e5 or on c5. That's a very common plan on the queen's gambit. Uh, after rook c1, wolf went for a different plan. He wants to solve the problem of the bishop on c8 at once. He wants to go bishop b7, maybe even take on c4, and then go for c5. So he gets his share of the center and he gets all his pieces up. And especially he solves the uh, permanent problem of this bishop, which is the biggest problem of black on the king's gambit. Uh -huh. um, after b6, uh, it's quite a common occurrence that white takes on d5. 
because he's now ready to exploit the weak squares, the weak dark squares left by B6. Uh, so B6 is usually followed by C takes D5 in a lot of variation. Um, E takes D5. Well, this is the original Pillsbury plan, <laughs> knight E5. Um, there's some resemblance with the London because uh, well, White is actually one thing here is he wants to go f4, bishop d3, queen c2, or queen f3 maybe, uh, castle king side, and then go for a strong attack on the king side. Uh, Pillsbury got away with this many times. Uh, Black has effective counters, but well, here he didn't find any of those. I mean, it was a very fresh idea at the time. Bishop b7 and then f4. And now this has some resemblance with the ideas White has on the London. A6 might not be all that necessary at this point. Uh, he's trying to cover b5 in case White goes Bishop b5 and tries to exploit this. At this point, he might have, might as well play c5 in one move. A6, bishop d3, c5, castle king side, and then... How about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looks familiar. Yeah. Rings a bell. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it's not that tragic, but what you have to know when you make a move like that and you give up tension in the center is that you're giving your opponent the free hand to an attack on the king side. I mean, um, one of the things that keeps your opponent in check when he's trying to mount an attack is the central tension, because he always has to take into account that this is a possibility. And maybe now, after the change, the pawn on d4 probably going to be attacked. And if that isn't the case, now this is rock solid. I mean, there's no way of attacking this, so white doesn't have to worry about this anymore. And he can go bishop b1 or bishop f5, like he played in the game. And now he's ready to well to concentrate all his forces on the king side. Um, where, well, he has a lot of pieces there already, but uh, he doesn't need to worry about the center anymore. And Black is, well, pretty much committed to launching an all-out attack on the queen side. And if you're going to do that, you might as well, you might as well be sure that you're actually getting there on time. Because White is the one who is going to get the most powerful threats. I mean, he's going for the, he's going for the throat of this king here. And Black is only trying to. Uh, gain some space on the queen's side. Um, maybe the play wasn't perfect, but it is very illustrative of what problems Black faces here. Feels uh, where he went for rook f3. Well, this rook lift is quite usual and immediately posing threats again. h7, rook e8, and well. Pillsbury was a very direct player. <laughs> uh, he's already eyeing h7. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a, bishop takes h7. It's a threat right now because after knight takes h7, queen h5 will hit. Uh, it will hit the knight on h7 mm -hmm. and this pawn on f7. So it's it's actually a threat here. Uh, at some point, maybe White could play a3. And we saw something similar in your game because now it's not so easy to play a5 because this pawn is hanging. So uh, black still needs more and more than just to get those pawns going. I mean, he has to defend the pawn on b5 first. Well, he can go. Queen, I was going to play queen b6, but he's nice hanging. And well, you get the idea. He needs to spend even more time defending his pawns just before he can push them. And well, white is is not going to wait. <laughs> uh, 
Meanwhile, while he's going to play Rook H3 and he's going to threaten a lot of things, well, he went for Rook H3 directly, but A3 was a good idea too. G6. And now, uh, Pillsbury went for the slightly imprecise Bishop B1. Uh, incredibly, he could already go for Queen F3 and completely ignore this bishop. <laughs> Uh, can he take on f5? Could, uh, could Wolf take that bishop on f5? What do you think? I'm not seeing anything yet for white. Um, every line, I, I mean, I keep thinking that the black king can hide on h8. I mean, I'm looking at instances where white plays bishop h6. Um, and then I just think the king is going to go to h8 and then rook g8. Um, okay, well, the king on h8 doesn't defend this pawn anymore. So this is going to be a problem. One of the keys is that king h8 is not possible, actually. Um, no, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Uh, it's actually not, it's nothing flashy. <laughs> uh, it's rook g3. I mean, your whole piece down, but there's, there are no, there's, there's no defense against, well, mm. pretty much any discovered check here. Uh, queen a King h8 is not possible because of knight takes f7, and that's a huge problem for black because his, his king can't hide anywhere. King f8 just receives mate. Um, well, all you can mm. hope for at this stage is knight g4, maybe. But I don't think that solves anything. Um, well, for one thing, you have bishop takes c7, and after queen takes, knight takes g4, and you can take because it's going to be checkmate. Um, I don't think it's the only way of winning, but it's it seems more than enough. <laughs> uh, incredibly, why I could, could even ignore that bishop on f5, it's not possible to take it. Uh, Pillsbury got it off the way. <laughs> he played bishop b1, which is a very reasonable move, uh, but it was the strongest. I mean, queen f3, uh, queen f3 already <laughs> uh, put another piece on a very aggressive square, and it almost canceled this um, this possibility for black, which he might have. Uh, which might, he might have 
needed to play knight e4 at some stage. Uh, it might not be the best solution, uh, but it might be necessary at some point because the attack is playing itself. Uh, well, he went for knight takes e5 here, which is an ugly move after f takes e5. White gets this semi-open file. Um, mm -hmm. The pawn on e5 is, is going to have a, a crushing effect on black species. I mean, uh, if you don't get to keep this knight on f6, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, the thing is, it wasn't very easy to come up with something useful here. A move like b4 uh, still has some problems. I mean, this was Black's plan, uh, but here we see why Pittsburgh wasn't trying to prevent it by means of a3. Now he wanted to go knight a4. And in any event, this knight is going to be ready to go to c5 if Black wants to simplify the position by means of knight xz, f takes z, knight e4. Uh, then all pieces are exchanged, and this knight lands on c5, and it's going to be a very annoying knight. <laughs> um, for example, knight takes e5, f takes e5, knight e4, bishop takes e7, rook takes, bishop takes e4, c takes e4, and I'm knight. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we have another situation of a kind of bad bishop against a very strong knight, and well, there are a lot of problems on dark square, so white is going to have a good time here. Um, he went for Don't. knight takes e, uh, pardon, sorry. Oh, I, I was just going to say in that line, um, bishop bishop c6 almost seems like like it consolidates a lot of those issues. Uh, can we go back to that previous line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, was that here? Yeah, and then what's... Uh, bishop d5. Yeah. Oh, d5, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, possible. I'm, won uh, I'm wondering what White's plan would be here, because these three pawns are kind of looming in. Yeah, I guess he still has to play on the king side. He he needs to, to exploit this. <laughs> I guess queen e1 with the idea of playing queen h4 is a possibility. Well, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe even better is... Um, Queen g4 hitting the pawn on e4 and bringing the queen with some gain of time. This could be a way. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I wonder if we could, could we uh, trade here? Do we want to trade that bishop for the knight? Uh, Maybe yes, but the oh, pawn our fa uh, uh, this pawn's falling too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't see how we're going to defend it actually. Mm. Okay. I didn't consider the pawn at all, but this is also a problem. I mean, I was worried about Queen H4, but <laughs> but we we have to take a look at this pawn also. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like Black is dropping something. I guess. Um, yeah. And. I was only looking at it from a positional point of view, but there are more more problems than than I previous, previously thought. <laughs> uh, he went for a similar line. He played knight takes e5, f takes e5. Um, well, now he played knight d7, which is uh, a bit ugly. I mean, this knight is completely out of the game, uh, he's going to, uh, he's going for a completely defensive task after knight f8 and knight e6. Maybe this is the maneuver he had in mind, knight, oh, I'm sorry, knight f8 and knight e6. Yeah. The, the knight will be well posted here, but it takes time and it's not a terribly, terribly active knight. Uh, this is more critical, I guess. Knight e4, it's a very common device just to shut this bishop and, and prevent any attacking chances by white. Um, here, bishop takes e7 has a similar idea to 
what we saw. Uh, Net White tries to take with the bishop on e4, and then he's going to try to exploit this uh, this weak squares. Afterwards, something like queen g4, I guess. I guess it's thrown here too. Um, but black has this interesting possibility, <laughs> an intermediate move. Now he's hitting the queen, and he avoids uh, this situation of a good knight against a bad bishop on b7. So uh, he's uh, he's getting something out of this. Uh, now a very crazy line goes queen h5. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, it looks, it looks, well, um, that's a desperado. <laughs> yeah, I guess, um, okay, yeah, there's just so many pieces hanging, it's, <laughs> yeah, okay, I see, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. This is a... I guess you might have heard of Desperado. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, falling anyway. yeah. Well, nor normally, I'm I'm used to Desperado moves being, you know, getting like a pawn. Uh, I haven't really seen them for a positional purpose, um, but it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's it's crazy and it's very sad to. <laughs> it's not an easy move to spot, especially if you were calculating this uh, a few moves ago. <laughs> um, well, uh, the queen is falling anyway, so white thinks, why not wreck his pawn structure <laughs> uh, before he gets to take my queen? Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes sense, but you have to take into account that white is giving up and it changed here because black gets to play knight e2 check, mm. king f2. And uh, well, he can't take the whole rook on c1 because bishop f6, it's checkmate. And uh, taking this bishop doesn't make sense because now that black's structure is wrecked, uh, he shouldn't go for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the best should be knight takes g3, but after bishop f6 check, and another important intermediate because the, the bishop was lost <laughs> and then h takes g3 and hmm. white has more than a reasonable compensation for the exchange i mean you're threatening to play rook h1 take here and there even is an attack <laughs> incredibly there's an attack without the queen but this bishop is giant i mean it's very well uh, placed and it's worth a rook um it's not easy. I mean, this is far from trivial, but I would rather be white here. I guess this is the only move just to go bishop g4 against rook h1 and defend this pawn. But you get to play four. These pawns are, are going to be moving forward um, almost immediately. Well, there are a lot of trouble for this is a lot of trouble for black. Um, I just wanted to show it because it was a very original move. <laughs> that Queen H5 was crazy. Um, he went for Knight E7, which is a bit sad. He had to play Knight E4, I guess, and and try to to get to one of those lines. Uh, now White really is attacking for free. He played Bishop E7, Rook takes C7, Queen F3, and he's ready to go. Rook f1, maybe king f4, king h, queen h6, queen rook f4, and uh, black is not going to be in time to, to launch a serious attack. Uh, knight f8, rook f1, queen d7, queen f6, b4 finally. He played uh, queen d7 before just to have this. Uh, this square are protected, but neither for anyway because yeah, this rock, is yeah. 
Um, now c5 would be super strong outpost yeah now and, the, the knight gets into play and, yeah yeah and, and, and b6 yeah <laughs> he's threatening knight b6 also uh queen c7 knight c5 bishop c8 rook h6 the thing is um black is completely tied down i mean this all of these weaknesses and dark squares um even if he if he doesn't lose immediately it's going to cost him in the long run it's what happens with <laughs> those core core, core, core holes uh a5 rook f4 where well, he's now ready to go rook f h4 this is now a disaster i know he had to go for each of these seats we're going to see why later, <laughs> because he actually played rook b8, and now it's your turn. How did Pillsbury tore his opponent apart? Because it's it's quite impressive. Just throwing out some ideas. Um, I'm looking at bishop f5. Just just a wild idea. Because if he takes with the pawn... Well, no. I guess if he takes with the pawn... That's... Not serving us any good. I was just taking a look. If he takes with the bishop, then... We're deflecting that bishop so that we could play knight a6. But that probably doesn't work. Um... E6, I'm taking a look at e6 now because he can't take with a pawn because it's mate. If he takes with the knight, we recapture. Um, and then he takes with the bishop. That doesn't seem to do us any good either. There's always just the good old push the push Harry push the H pawn. But <laughs> um. well, you could push the H pawn. The thing is, uh, like is sort of threatening to play rook b6. That was the idea of rook b8. You know what? Well, well, I guess I mean, we, well, we we still could play knight a6, but. I think our knight is really good. I don't think we want to trade that. Yeah. Um, plus, uh, black could still possibly still possibly just play rook b6. Um, hang on. It's kind of unexpected. Um, okay. oh, it's... I'm just taking a look at bishop. Bishop takes uh, g6. Um, so if he takes it with the knight then rook takes and that and then that looks that looks good so if he takes it any if he takes it with the h pawn that's a mate so, so he has to take it with the 
He would have to take it with the knight. So bishop takes g6, knight takes g6. Um, and then rook takes g6. And if h takes g6, maybe we have then rook h4. Yeah. Really? Great. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. It's not easy to spot because mm. the pawn is apparently defended three times, but actually not. <laughs> uh, well, he can take with the h pawn because of the mate on h8. This knight is actually not defended because this bishop is on the way, so he can take with the f pawn. And that only leaves us with knight takes d6, but this is another huge blow, taking advantage of the fact that this is not defended. H takes it, rook, h4, and well, it's inevitably made. This bishop g6 is really amazing. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Wolf didn't take, he played. Rook oh, I, I didn't consider. Well, I didn't consider that, but then I thought we would probably have enough. But I should have looked. I should have went down this. I should have looked this. <laughs> um, he was a resourceful guy. He, he played well. <laughs> yeah, I should have looked at this because um, I considered that, and then I just thought we still have the bishop. So I thought we could. I thought we we'd be able to at least give a check and run away at the very least. Um, okay, let me think. So. I think yeah. Well, we I think we have to give a check here. So I'm just taking a look. If if bishop bishop takes h7, knight takes h7. Oh, I, I was hoping that we could go rook g4, but we can't. There's a bishop on it. Ding ding. So that won't work. So if we take on f7 instead, he has to take back. So bishop takes f7, rook takes f7. Hmm. There's actually more than one way. Um, Feels where he took the lazy path here <laughs> he he went for the material um, he um, well he won an exchange how can you win an exchange here <laughs> oh, okay, there is a discovery on the queen. If we take if we take the rook, if queen takes b6 and then queen takes we have a discovery on that queen. So yeah, so queen takes b6, queen takes b6, and then bishop can take on, I guess, on f7. Exactly. He, he took the, the lazy path. <laughs> I mean, uh, he might have felt, well, this is so uncomplicated. I mean, it's winning easily. I don't have to calculate more complicated variations. And it's a reasonable, um, it's a very reasonable way of looking at things. Uh, you take minimal risks, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but here he sits was crashing. I mean, there's made almost everywhere. <laughs> um, oh well, it had to be calculated, and I think he wasn't he wasn't in the mood anymore. <laughs> what what um what time controls did they use in 1903? Was that like four hour like five hours? Six, more than that, right? They had a, they had a lot more time. I don't know uh, which was the year when the clock uh, was started to be used, and, mm. and I don't remember when mm. the chess clock was implemented. Uh, but uh, at first, they didn't play with time limits, and 
well, the games went for, I don't know, 15, 20 hours. <laughs> they played in different sessions. Uh, well, that was uh, what what made the chess clock a necessity, but I don't remember the mm. year okay. in which it was implemented. But the, the games were long, much, much longer than any time control we are aware of now. So, so White, White probably had time to, to look for a better yeah. move. Okay. Maybe he didn't have the energy. Anymore, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> he might have been already thinking for, I don't know, seven hours, eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, um, someone in, someone in the chat just said, so Mr. Saban said, the first time that game clocks were used in a chess tournament was in the London 1883 tournament. Ah, okay. So the, there were, that, that was the first one. Clocks, okay. Yeah. And I know that, I know that before they invented the analog clock, they actually used sand dials. They oh, use the sand dials. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, yeah. How do you know much, how much time do you really have left? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't, but it, it would still, it, it, it helps, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, at least you, at least there's a limit. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the other days, in the romantic times, uh, uh, when the guy was lost, he just started to think eternally. Mm. Uh, but it must have been very frustrating for the likes of Anderson. <laughs> uh, yeah, and at this point, I guess uh, several hours had passed. Uh, e sits is, I mean, queen takes v sits is perfectly fine, but uh, e sits is stronger. But well, there's a lot of piece contact. Uh, I mean, well, you still can take with the h pound. You still can take with the f pound because of mm -hmm. both checkmates. Uh, well, what about bishop takes his seats, for example? How do we checkmate here? So I think we um, knight takes bishop. Yeah, if we have yeah. to eliminate the defender. And then we're threatening bishop takes f7. Yeah, if rook e takes his seats, we go bishop takes f7. And rook b takes his seats. Now there's no bishop guarding g4, so I think we could do bishop takes h7. Exactly. Bishop takes h7, knight takes h7, rook g4, and then we have queen h8, checkmate. So there was no avoiding checkmate after e6. It was very strong. But well, queen takes b6 is fine too. Um, well, he didn't take, he took uh, the bishop on g6. Queen f6, actually. <laughs> uh, rook e8, rook f1. He's a hole, it's changed up, and he's still on the attack, so there's not much story here. It ended up pretty, pretty quickly, and this pawn is falling. And, uh, well, uh, you can see the similarities with your game. I mean, uh, Black released the tension very early in the game, and then White got a, a very, very easy attack. I mean, once this pawn center is well defended and there's no tension, White can go about uh, launching his attack without any problem. Uh, I wanted to take a look at one more game because it's just uh, too important, a too important game. I mean, it's a very well-known classic, Rubinstein Tageman. I mean. Uh, I don't know, you might have even seen this game. Probably not, no, haven't. I haven't. Well, if you haven't, uh, we're going to see it uh, up to one point and then uh, we're going to play out that position and you have to finish me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Let's give it a twist. <laughs> 
I mean, uh, d4. d5, c4, e6, another queen's gambit, bishop g5, knight bd7, e3, bishop d7, knight f3, castle, and now queen c2. Rubinstein took a page out of Pillsbury's book um, and he developed a system which is very similar. Um, he wants to play knight e5, f4, bishop d3, and well, all those familiar ideas we, we already saw. Uh, queen c2 is not the best move according to theory here. I mean, uh, I think rook c1 is still um, considered the best. And the thing is, queen c2 now uh, less, uh, has less control of d4, so now c5 is possible uh, it's a little runs uh, it's a little subtlety but it's quite common that when white goes queen c2 very early on the on the queen's gambit c5 is suddenly possible uh, it also happens in the ninso indian your ninso player uh, i think yeah is that right and uh, for example after bishop b4 in the ninso when white plays queen b3 he gives up some control of d4 and black can immediately strike c5 and uh, well that variation has a good reputation for for black for example uh, here something similar happens once uh, the queen abandons control of d4 then c5 is the usual uh, is the usual correct move uh, b sits well uh, Hman didn't go for it, he just played b6, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop d3, bishop b7, and now Rubinstein, well, he wanted blood, he went a long casting. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Living on the edge. Yeah, you can actually play like this. It seems okay. a bit crazy. Yeah, I'm, sc not even a I'm scared of rook c8, yeah. Yeah, there's not even a c-pound, but... Well, uh, white can just play in B1, and it's scary, but it's quite possible. <laughs> uh, C5, actually, <laughs> he's going for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, well, in positions with uh, opposite castle kings, uh, there's no way around it. You have to to attack and go for it because it's a race. It's a race. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, him who strikes first has a very good shot at finishing off his opponent. Uh, well, Rubinstein plays very logically, h4. And now again, c4. Uh, we have this same idea. It seems like it makes much more sense now because this king is actually in c1. So uh, this pawn storm is actually going to... Uh, target this king, but again, loosening control of the center, giving that attention too early, also gives white a free hand on the king side. And the thing is, all his pieces were developed just to play on the center and the king side. So uh, white is ahead here. He's going to be uh, around black's king much earlier. Bishop f5, rook e8. Uh, well, now Rubinstein kind of gives a lesson on how to how to launch a successful attack. He plays bishop takes f6, which is not an easy move to make. Um, he's just gaining time because once black recovers, uh, well, uh, black retakes on f6. He goes g4 and now he's going to go g5 with time. He's going to hit this knight and his pawns are rolling very, very fast here. I mean, if we take a look at Black's pawns, they are. Mm. Well, Black doesn't make any kind of progress at this point. And we can say that Black has made illogical or very bad moves. But maybe he gave up control, uh, attention, I mean, uh, of the center very early. Uh, he might have had to play rook c8 and, and play with this idea of taking on d4 at a suitable moment. Maybe 
go A, C, and B5, but without uh, going C4 too early, because now White ha really has a free hand to just push his pawns, and he's getting there earlier. Uh, he should be seats, G5, and now, well, the thing is, in this position, Black actually got to play knight e4, uh, a usual resource that, uh, well, Black hasn't didn't use in the last game. Uh, h5, queen e7, rook dg1, every piece should intervene in the attack. <laughs> a6. And now we're going to play this position from this point. Uh, let me see how do we do that here. Continue from here. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to play like a rapid game. <laughs> Maybe 10 3 so that you have some increment. You can think. Uh, oh, okay. I will send you a challenge. Okay, it, it, kicked, it kicked me out of the study, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and now you can play this position. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, good. I get unlimited time on the first move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let it's me. It's a play. little bonus. <laughs> so it's 10 and 3. Okay. I'll vocalize my thought process. Yeah, exactly. I was okay. going to tell you that. Feel yeah. free to. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm trying to. Uh, I'm just trying to evaluate the whole position. It. I don't play these openings as as white or 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 black, but I do play Sicilian as white and black, and this is very reminis uh, reminiscent of that because you know go going for each other's throats. Um, it's actually just, it reminds me of the English line, the Sicilian Nydorf English line. Yeah, I saw you playing the Nydorf. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. Um, okay. I don't know how you do it. I mean, uh, it really gives, it, it really gives me <laughs> the chills <laughs> playing those kind of lines. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like it. I like them because if if you know if you know the the theory very well and the opening very well, um, one misstep from well either way, if you make the wrong move, then your opponent can capitalize on it. But I kind of I like I like the I like openings that you take one wrong step and then it's kaput. Yeah, I like really sharp. Yeah, I like I like sharp lines like that. Okay, so in this position, let me think here. Um, I know that I want to be attacking. Um, you can't afford to defend because that'll get you nowhere. Um, I won't abuse my first move too much, but I. Um, <laughs> Those are the rules. <laughs> yeah, that's it's not so easy. 
Hmm. I would like to play knight e5, but black can just take immediately. I don't see a way of getting that in. I'd love to push f4 too. So I'm thinking about moving my my f knight. Maybe possibly knight h4. I kind of like knight h4 because um, knight h4 f4 something like that is looking reasonable to me. Um, it's also putting pressure or it's controlling the g6 square if something happens there. I think I might play knight h4. Um, I'm just looking if there's any immediate responses by black that I need to worry about. Like, But I don't think so. I think I might, I think I'll play knight h4 because I don't want to, I don't want to spend an eternity thinking here. I think mm. I'm going to go with knight h4. Mm. And I, in doing so, I didn't realize that I just drop a pawn. But uh, it's difficult to <laughs> to take this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure. I don't know. It's probably. I think it might still be good for Black to take. But it's it's that's a scary pawn to take. But I should have at least saw that I'm dropping the pawn, so that was not good. No, that looks pretty bad. I mean, just F4 immediately if black takes, I think, just F4. Well, it's this one will be hanging. I don't know. Uh... Uh, when you when you when you yeah. highlight when you highlight or something, I can't see it on the screen because it's not a study. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the time starts now. <laughs> okay. Okay, G6. Oh, it was a whole move without the time running. <laughs> now we learned from that game in our last session, last move I want to play here is H6. So you're not getting that. Um, you told me before when we have this space and the pressure, we want to open up files. We want to open up lines. So I'm looking at H takes G six. Um, I'm also just taking a look at F three, F three pawn takes, takes again, but then we have kind of an half open file f3 is interesting uh f3 doesn't work because of knight takes c3 um so pawn takes pawn takes i'm thinking i want to open up stuff here h takes that's gotta be so if h takes knight takes we still have f4 yeah, yeah, it's got. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking we we want to take here. So I'm thinking immediately, just taking knight takes g6. Immediately, that just seems like really powerful. Those two two defending pawns in exchange for um, a knight. Yeah, I mean. So I guess the real question here would be, do I want to take it? Do I want to get rid of the bishop first or the knight? Um, if I take with the bishop first, I'm taking and I'm threatening h8 and I'm threatening the queen, but the queen could just simply slide over. But if I take with the, if I take with the knight first, I'm attacking the rook. Taking with the bishop first seems 
That seems a little bit better. So it's impossible I don't take, but that looks too good of an opportunity to not not do that. Also, if I take with the knight first, I might be able to possibly take knight takes e4. Um, take no, maybe not, maybe not. But take take. take no, no, that won't work. But. The only thing I just keep looking at is taking on, on G6. Uh, that just has to be good. So bishop takes, H takes, knight takes, queen G7. Rook H8, king f7 yeah so that's where i'm not so sure so bishop takes h takes knight takes queen queen g7 and there could be other moves as well but queen g7 Seems like it would have to play rook h8, king f7. Yeah, so I'm not so sure about that. I know my time's running, I know. Um, so I'm going to have to make a move soon. Um, if I do it the other way, change the move order, um, take what's the knight first, boom, boom, boom. So it's possible I just don't take on g6. It's very possible. Such a good opportunity, though. Ah, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna do it. And then I'm thinking, I might not take on g6 right away. Though I may have to. So if I take the knight, I don't think the pawn can really take. It may be able to. Yeah, maybe because you could block with the queen. But no, I think I have to take. I think I will take the pawn right away. And I've already kind of looked at rook h8 doing nothing. Rook h8 and then king f7. Knight could go to e5, but so what? We don't really want that. Although, so rook, a, rook h8, king f7, knight e5. Um, bishop takes... Yeah, my attack is dwindling. This is uh, falling apart. What a, maybe I have rook h6. Could be an idea. Rook h6. I might go rook h6 here. My time is running. I'm going to go rook h6. Okay, I burned a lot of time, but... Okay, stupid bishop on b7 is <laughs> protecting that rook. Um, time is running here, so let's see. Take, take. Okay, well. So I could play rook, rook h1. Or maybe I can't because my other rook is falling. Check, right, so I do have a check. 
but then that does nothing. Okay, oh boy, I, I just gotta... Oh, I forgot there's the increment, but oh, just three seconds, okay. Anyways, my attack has dwindled down to nothing here, but... I might go back to rook h6, possibly. But rook h6, rook, and then black has rook h8. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. So maybe, maybe back to book H six. But that looks a bit silly. But I have to make a move soon. Okay, book H six. Ah, <sighs> oh, man. Annoying bishop protecting F, F5. Ah, uh, okay. I gotta make a move. Gotta make a move here. Knight in the corner, the best spot for a knight. Okay. <laughs> uh, I gotta move quick.
Oh, annoying, annoying. <laughs> um, Wait, how is black up seven? <laughs> how is black? Well, how? When did that happen? Okay, well, I guess I didn't get the I didn't get the queen yet, but still. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. You didn't want to close the position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That first move is hard, though. That first move I th was really hard, I thought. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very hard exercise. Um, it looked, I don't know if my G6 was a, a good move. <laughs> it looked very dangerous. So that's why the attack. Dangerous. Sorry, uh, oh, I don't remember knight c6. Uh, I know, and uh, the time when I play g6, maybe that g6. Um, just too much. Can we put can this? I... Can we put this back in the study? Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to study. Um, okay, I'll just hit back on my browser here. Oh, but we have to. We would have to bring that game back. Yeah, if you can put that game into the study. Yeah, I mean, uh, are you there? I'm. I'm in the study. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, we are after the move. Long casting. Okay. C five. H four. C four. But this is still the. Um, this is not the game we just played. Because that oh, would. Is, after, is it? After a C. Uh, yeah, yes, after rook b g1, a6. Now it is. Uh, yes, this was the initial position. Uh, here you play knight h4. Oh, yeah, I, I could, I could, I couldn't think of anything. Kind of making room for f3. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe f3 has the problem that. Um, this pawn is hanging. I don't know if it's if it's possible at some point to play f3. Maybe it is. Um, white's attack is strong anyway. I mean, it's very difficult to face. Uh, well, you need some kind of breakthrough. Uh, I don't know if you consider this pawn break. Um, I did, but then I thought we're just closing it after h6. Yeah, uh, at least I'm going to um, be able to to keep things closed by means of F takes G seed, H takes G seed, H seed. And now I don't see if there's a way of, of getting to this king. And if black starts pushing forward, I yeah. Can, Maybe the, maybe the attack has. Uh, maybe that's everything white gets. I'm still trying to see what happens after. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, and queen takes e4 check. Um, that's something to consider. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That c file is so scary for me. Yeah. That's why I'm not entirely sure of this. Maybe King F8 and now Rook A C8 is a 
um, and the night is also hanging so maybe or maybe white is having some kind of trouble here i mean unless he has something um, immediately there's this could, could, could almost take rook, rook takes h6 because then um g7 might be something oh yes yeah, so yeah it's probably too slow though because rook c8 is still coming but just looking at it yeah, this is this is checkmate immediately so we have to take here mm -hmm. it's interesting very interesting <laughs> g7 queen takes g7 only move rook takes g7 and what a mess uh rook a c a um but yeah uh no, well, no, no 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 bishop bishop and bishop is on it bishop the bishop on uh f5 oh and then you yeah. go rook g8 oh, okay yeah um, yeah bishop takes g8 and then rook g8 yeah ah, so maybe there's something to be said about g6 um That's interesting. Let's see. F takes G six. H takes G six. H six. Knight takes C four. This had to be considered. I mean, if this works, maybe F takes G six is not the move. <laughs> now it looks scary. Hmm. I don't know maybe taking on c3 first um maybe taking on c3 first and wait for white to take and then he may take at least just to to have one of the files closed um it doesn't look that great too <laughs> for white for black, I mean, uh, maybe this way at least one of the files is closed, the edge file. Uh, it still looks very dangerous, and I don't know if G takes H7 is the move. I guess this is strong. Um, for example, queen takes, bishop takes H7. King F8, Bishop G6. Oh no, this knight is hanging. Uh, well, here knight 5. I don't know if Black is going to survive this. Okay, G6 might be. A, I, I, maybe I'm not. A what, what the. Okay. I'm just, not, I'm just not sure there when you said the knight was hanging. Can you go back to that position? Okay. Um, uh, I, can, I can't see it on my end. I'm sorry. Oh. I, now I got the wrong variation. Let me see. G C. I was taking a look at uh, knight takes c3. In general, taking on c3 is too dangerous because this knight on e4 is a great blocker. Uh, once I lift this blockade, uh, all of white pieces are. Yeah, crushing. yeah, the, yeah. The, the queen has a lot of access. That's a problem. I guess this is a stronger move because this pawn is falling immediately and with check. So I wanted to play bishop g6 here, but then I noticed that this knight is hanging. So yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking. Oh, I can't move the pieces. Oh. Uh, what? Oh, oh. So no. I, well, it's. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, you you wanted to go? Oh yeah, here. Yeah. Well, I was thinking possibly we can just give up that that night yeah maybe maybe it's enough i didn't calculate this really but oh okay no, um, yeah. i'm not sure and i don't know if this is necessary at all <laughs> uh, maybe it works so, so if he takes or oh, check takes uh oh wow <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. 
Yeah, I didn't see that fork. It might be too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not necessary. I mean, instead of Bishop G6, you have Knight G5. And it look, ah, that's really strong. <laughs> yeah, it might. Yeah, almost wonder, or even possibly, I'm looking at H6. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that could work. <laughs> I like H6, I think, here. There is still the... Ch stronger. Yeah. It's stronger because this is coming either way, so I don't have the time to take it. Yeah, it's crashing. Oh, my. Yeah, if I play here, my G5 or this. Yeah. And if I may. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, or we could even just take the knight right now and. Oh, no, sorry, because uh, he'll take our knight, right? Okay. But I guess if we. If, even if we. We could even just. We could even. Or. Whoops. How do I get back to that position? It, it won't let me. It, it, it won't let me go to the variations. Okay, yeah, but I mean, yeah, we could just take with the, even take the knight here, I think. Would, uh, would, or maybe not, I, I, I guess he just takes yeah, the bishop. Yeah, takes here. yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but that, that just has to be, yeah, that has to be yeah, good. Yeah, this is crashing, and, mm. and then you're going to attack for free because you will, you will, you won't even be a piece. A piece down. <laughs> You're going to be attacking with even material. Um, yeah, this is too much. Uh, G6 was a worthy alternative. Uh, you could start thinking of uh, opening some lines against this king. Uh, I don't know if um uh, f is the best move here or h takes g6 i guess h takes g6 has the same problem i mean uh, you're oh. taking here with check and that's a huge blow to this game <laughs> so this is not an easy threat to face um Maybe black should go back and try to close the position as much as possible. Um, so that's... That's a possibility. Oh, well. But I'm, I'm almost just looking at uh, h6. h6, yeah, I wanted to play like this. Mm. Mm. We could almost just take the pawn, I'm thinking. You... Here? Yeah. Yes. And rook takes. Rook takes or queen takes or... Yeah. Even pawn takes. Everything looks good. <laughs> Yeah, it's strong. Either way, actually, pawn takes looks pretty. Yeah, looks looks pawn nicer. Pawn. Yeah. But this is was this is a very interesting alternative. It's not it's not what Rubinstein played here. Um, either way, I can't think of of a good variation for. For black, uh, but he went for a, an even more crushing attempt. Uh, he played bishop takes h7, which is absolutely crushing because he just opens both files. He's going to open the h file, the g file, and the h file. Mm. Someone, and someone, then, someone in the stream kept saying bishop takes h7, so. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he he played the Rubinstein. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's actually quite crushing. After King takes H seven, then now you're going to go, of course, G six. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. We tried to open as many lanes as possible. And uh, now, well, there are no, not many good options. After F takes this seed, which he didn't play, uh, if you go H takes this seed, then King G8, and this king is, well, it's kind of secure yeah. now. Well, rook, rook, rook H7. Rook H7? Yeah. Oh, okay, with the idea. Of yeah, yeah. Like this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have the time. Um, I'm thinking of Queen E6, maybe. Um, well, this King is trying to take the the emergency exit. And if the rook goes here, then this pawn is falling. So I don't know if this is going somewhere for white. Um, here, white has a, a much stronger move, and knight takes e4 because now he's going to deliver very strong check. Um, for example, if he takes the well, he can take with the queen because of the of the fork. And if he takes e4, knight g5. Check. And now if you go king g8, then queen takes e4 check, and it's going to be checkmate. King f8, knight h7, checkmate, mm-hmm. and well, king h8, he takes g6. Mm-hmm. So um, well, after knight g5 check. King H6 is another possibility, but this is a huge blow. <laughs> Knight F7, um, you are attracting the queen to the F7 yeah. square. Otherwise, it's checkmate. Uh, well, eight takes G6. Uh, so you, after G6, you just can't take the pawn. You have to go back to G8. And now, what would you play? Well, I, I will introduce an intermediate move which he made, uh, which is quite strong. He played knight takes e4, uh, because now black can't retake on e4 because of, of g takes f7 check, and after king takes f7, then knight g5 check, and the queen is going to fall. The variation goes like this. Now he's threatening the rook, so there's no other move than this, but knight g5 check and the queen is lost so after knight takes e4 he has to take with the pawn and now now yes now comes the question what did white play here i'm just taking a look at um g takes f7 because the the queen can't take because he loses the queen and if the king takes Okay, maybe it's not so great because I think just king could just take f7. So if g takes f7, king takes f7. Yeah, we're starting to fizzle out already. Um, then the other immediate move I would look at is h6. Just looking to take on g7. So if h6, if white had to... Well, Okay, so if h6 and then f takes g7, well, we could just take rook takes g7. Uh, I'm liking, well, well, I guess, I mean, we do have a knight hanging, but. Yeah, um, I really like your reasoning. h6 is the move. Uh, we're going to open both files. That's what Rubinstein had in mind when he sacrificed his bishop on h7. He said, I'm going to open both the g and the h5. And well, there's no hiding for this king if that happens. Um, yeah, white has sacrificed this already, but this is not possible. I mean, if he takes, he takes his f3, now she takes f7, and it's going to be checkmate really soon. After it takes three seats, now we are threatening. Well, we are threatening this, we are threatening that. 
<laughs> and the Quintex G7 trying to give back some material then mm. they're getting terminated promptly mm. so there's no way there's no way uh, black takes on f3 anymore uh, if the king is suddenly stripped and he has no pawn color this is not going to be possible uh, the queen is going to um to just take part on the attack very very soon um the critical move was f takes g6 uh, which was not that easy to refute because rook takes take g6 i'm sorry uh, now black has a lot of material for the queen if well it's something like rook takes g7 queen takes g7 h takes g7 bishop e4 and now the queen doesn't take part in the attack um, and black has a rook and two bishops for the queen so he's given uh, some material up uh, after queen takes c4 king takes g7 and there's no checkmate and these bishops do a great job uh, fending off this queen so it wasn't trivial to refute f takes g6 uh, it required some some very good calculation by Rubinstein uh, he saw knight h4 your move <laughs> the move you played on the first move um, which is crashing I mean uh, the g file is already open the h file is going to be open really soon and these pieces are just going to crash through for example uh, g5 knight g6 uh, queen f6 h7 check and it's almost over I mean, now you have to give up a whole rook and the g pawn is also going to fall this is well, an illustrative line uh, this is not necessarily going to happen exactly like that but well it's it's kind of forced because this is a threat this is a threat and well the bishops do nothing to help this hopeless king uh, it wasn't that easy to spot i mean f take g6 was the most um the most resilient thing uh, Black played another reasonable move. He tried to keep at least one file closed. He wants to cover his king behind this pawn here. Um, but it's to no other. He, for instance, took on g7. That's fine. He has to open at least one file. Uh, and well, uh, the thing is, now rook g8 check and rook h7 is threatened so he needs to take the knight or it's just going to be too much material Qu queen takes uh, c5 no. uh this power yeah no. yeah uh, i think he has queen is six at this point um uh, so if check take and then take here oh he's this bishop is defending the rook whoops the rook okay um, the bishop, so okay yes. <laughs> yeah he takes f3 and now he went for rook h8 check king takes g7 mm. rook h7 oh, check yeah. and king g8 and now it's not just a matter of taking the queen on e7 because again black is going to have a pair of bishops and a rook for the queen so he's going to be <laughs> some material up um if he's successful in defending his king uh, he's even going to win <laughs> uh, so rubinstein still didn't care about the material and he finished off the attack by just uh, bringing the only piece that is not participating directly in the attack. Uh, what did Pink he played here? <clears throat> I'm sorry.
Well, I, again, I'm looking at queen takes c5. I, the only defense that I can see at the moment is is queen um, queen e6, and then there is a bishop hanging. Um, we would still be a bishop down, though. <laughs> We'd still be a bishop yeah. down. Um, <laughs> if we, and then the other line I was looking at was. Well, it's the same thing, though. I, I was going to say. I was going to say if we went rook here, um, queen might be able to just sack itself for the rook. Uh, um, hard. To, I don't know if that would be enough to hang on. It might be. Um, and then there's also queen f5 trying to maybe get in something here. Um, yeah. Great. That's exactly what we need. Uh, mm -hmm. It's difficult. It's very difficult to spot because you have two bishops down. And, well, it seems like quiet move, but it isn't that quiet because this threat is massive. <laughs> um, in fact, he tried to open up the position, but it's a little bit too late here. Uh, but there was, there was no defense. Because if you take, then you go, she takes h7, and then this pawn is falling. Uh, so you can't just get behind that pawn and it's checkmate. Um, well, after queen f5, this threat is just too much. I mean, after queen h5, uh, you're threatening to go rook h8 and mate to follow very soon. Um, so even being with the disadvantage of two bishops, you get to just bring your queen to to finish off the attack. He tried c3, but then rook take c7, and it was already crashing. Mm, I guess he didn't go for queen h5. Why do you think he didn't play that? Well, there, White's king is open. I'm taking a look at this. I'm taking a look at this. If check here first and he takes, you might be able to, uh, I don't know, maybe he can duck, duck away. But if there's a check first, um, sorry, that's not a check. Um, it looks dangerous, doesn't it? Um, take a look at this again, but if check and just hide. Yeah, so if he takes here, check and hide. Um, maybe there's nothing there. Yeah, I guess C takes B2, and uh, there's no hiding for this king. I mean, um, if king takes B2, bishop A3 is the only move, I guess. Um, what would you play after king A1? So I'm just taking a look at a check to try to get a perpet. Um, I don't think white can take because I think there's brought, there's got to be a perpet here. And if whoops, and if white goes to b1, that's what I'm looking at. There is a check, um, and then he'll be forced to take, and then it's probably a perpet. I think you're giving checkmate. Oh really? Yeah, this should be two. Can uh, be one. This should be four. Queen takes d4, it will be two, uh, queen d4, and if he goes to a1, oh, yeah. c3 is checkmate, and if he goes here, we've queen got the, or, okay. 
Or rook c8. Yeah. Or rook c8. But okay, so what if, um, if what if he takes first, or he doesn't get the help of this bishop? If he takes first, then well, queen b4, king uh, c1. Well, there you can go queen c3 and bishop d4, and you're going to check. Ah, uh, oh wow, okay. Better so than well, be <laughs> you go to the c file and you all you also check back him. <laughs> yeah, wow. It was very dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, okay, let me go back. Queen h5, c takes b2. The other possibility is trying to run, but you're not going anywhere here. <laughs> you should be four, and yeah, uh, well, Cause, it's Because he's, yeah, this is covered. Yeah. yeah. He's not going anywhere. Well, he was getting checkmated, apparently, <laughs> if he went queen h5. So c3 was. Was a nice last try, I guess. <laughs> but rook takes e7, and there is curtains here. Uh, what if? What if? What if? Um, he took with the bishop. What do you think is next? Well, queen e6 looks really strong. You can't go here. This, I mean, there's just got to be a mate coming. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Queen e6 is just crashing. And rook takes e7, which seems more reasonable. But... Again, black has a lot of material for the queen, but uh, his pieces are very badly coordinated. And... Well, yeah, well, I'm just looking at simply taking on f6. Um, how does black defend the bishop? Um, yeah, that's already a problem. Yeah. Exactly. Queen takes f6, and that's not a good way of defending. The yeah, bishop. because then this is coming in. Yeah, rook h1. And it's going to end really soon. You have this check here, and then rook h8 checkmate. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, I really like the way he he crashed through here. This bishop takes f7 is a classic. <laughs> uh, he was trying to open both files, the gh file and the g file. I guess g6 was strong too. I don't. I'm not really sure. I I didn't run a, a thorough analysis or anything like that, but it looks it looks quite possible. Uh, but bishop takes h7 is is just crashing. I mean, it might have been very well calculated by him, I guess. But uh, this h6 is fantastic. I mean, he's in complete disregard for the <laughs> for the fur, for the material. Uh, he sacrifices another piece, but he's completely opening up this king. And well, that that's about it. Uh, but well, it all started with, again, uh, the release of tension by Black. Uh, this c4, uh, this c4 actually closes the position in White's favor because he's he's getting there sooner. I mean, uh, g4, g5 comes just too quickly. Uh, well, we saw it. Black never got this really going. I mean. Uh, when he got to with, with his pound to b4 and he actually threatened something, uh, he was receiving checkmate. <laughs> um, so, well, I'm leaving you another commented game on on the subject, quite a well-known one. Uh, it's Ewell Maroxi. This one I will I will enable you to see the move so that you can see it later. Let me see. I'm going to do that right now so I so I don't forget. Yeah. Forget. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll do that. I'll do it on. I'll do it while streaming tomorrow. Um, so it, it's it's it has the same theme. There is a, a release yeah. release of tension and a, a kind of a overextension of the pawn. Yeah, but it's a more balanced one. I mean, this case, um, 
Maroxi's plan wasn't all that bad. He was already very well developed and and the release of the tension wasn't that unreasonable. Um, but well, um, it might not have been the best option either. <laughs> uh, in fact, well, uh, it doesn't have all that much commentary because uh, it's a very wild game. A lot of variations should be checked, but uh, the most important moments are from, at least from the position and point of view, uh, the release of the tension and the, the subsequent moves because Black start, kind of starts playing uh, rather strange moves and allows White an attack. Uh, it wasn't a very precise game, but but it kind of shows the difficulties each one of the sides faces. So I leave you with that. Yeah, great. Thank you very much and thank you for your time. I know we went a little bit over on the time okay. here. Um, I yeah, yeah, so um, I will take a look at these games and um, we'll, I'll see you again next week. Okay. Okay, yeah. Thanks again. Have a good yeah. night. Thank you. Bye-bye.